Right Is before it? you make any moves. All right. Uh, it's a new song in policing in River State as the bad boys are getting bloody noses. In another blow to criminal gangs traveling the state, the police command announced the killing of a notorious gang leader, Peter Chuku, no, popularly known as Daddy Chuku. He was suspected to be responsible for the murder of the Community Development Committee chairman in Obiakpo local government area of the state, and Didi Livingstone. While briefing journalists in Port Harcourt about the development, the State Commissioner of Police, Olatunji Disu, said Daddy Chuko and his gang also invaded the community in a separate attack and killed 22 persons on the 9th of October 2017. Let's share the story by TVC News' Uchi Okoro with you. October 2017, TVC News visited the scene of an overnight shooting spree in Ngoshimini community in Port Harcourt that left 22 dead. Some victims and eyewitnesses at that time named one Mr. Peter Chuku, also known as Daddy Chuku, as the mastermind of the attack. It was this incident that landed the prime suspect the number one spot on the police most wanted list. Since then, Daddy Chuku has allegedly continued to engage in murder, extortion and kidnapping amongst others. The police intensified efforts to track him down after he led the gang to kill a community leader in front of his family in church in January this year. He was found hibernating in the residence of his abanis, where he went for spiritual fortification. And in an attempt to escape, he was fatally wounded and he succumbed to injury before I was arrested. The suspect is accused of carrying out several successful and failed assassination attempts. During a recent raid on a hotel where he escaped capture, the police uncovered a hit list containing 11 names. Finally, he was traced to his hideout in Delta State and killed in a gun battle. These guns are so sophisticated to the extent that uh, they installed a tracking device on the vehicle of the person they wanted to kill. And at the same time, he had a wonderful network of informants at his beck and call, and he used them for intelligence gathering concerning him. Just like this woman who witnessed the killing of her husband by the suspect, residents of Ngoshimini are celebrating. For the victims, this is justice, and for the community, it is freedom. I wish there's something I can do. Heart is something you see to know exactly how somebody feels. I am very proud of Nigerian police. He came to my house to pick me up with his gang, took me to his barracks, flogged me up for about six hours. After that, he cut off my ear for no reason. Investigation led to the arrest of these suspects, but the police said they would not rest until all members of the gang are apprehended. Uche Okoro, TVC News. So in River State, action is being taken. Jide, the police is stepping up efforts to rid the state of criminals. Yes, I've been really impressed with um, Latunji Disu um, since he got to River State to do the job of um, CP Rivers. Uh, he was uh, in that state earlier as a commander of the um, what was it called? SAS in the state. He was at one time commander of SAS in the state before coming to Lagos to be commander of RRS. And then um, he became um, the IG's uh, right right hand man as um, what, is, what do they call them? Like uh, like chief of staff to the IG or that's something they, well, that's the way they call them. I remember the principal later. staff officer. Yeah, principal staff, staff officer, officer to the IG. Yes, uh, the job that uh, Tunji, I mean, Lakano did Lakanu to Tafabalugu, when Tafabalugu was IG, I will uh, principal staff officer. So, from principal staff officer, he moved to Rivers. As someone who had worked in that place before, familiar with the bad boys in that area, as a 
uh, SAS commander. I'm not surprised uh, that he's recording um, successes in that place. Remember the fellow who killed a DPO in broad daylight, yeah. butchered him and posted mm -hmm. the pictures of the uh, DPO after he was butchered. They ambushed the DPO, was responding to a distress call, ambushed him and then dismembered him and filmed themselves. They got him. All of the boys, they first got the boys around him and invariably the river's police took him out of circulation. This is exactly what they've done. Seven years, this guy, Chuku, or Daddy Chuku, Daddy was Chuku. on the wanted list, was moving from state to state. Invariably, they got him um, in um, Delta State, where he had gone to see his list. You see, the Bible says there is no peace for the wicked. You take people's lives. You kill dozens of people in one day. On the day that they stormed the hotel where I was hibernating, they found a hit list. So if the police had not made him to leave town, by the fact that they were closing in on him, he probably would have taken out all of those people. He would have killed them, 11 persons on his list. So patience, peace, and um, the daring also often get uh, its reward. For all these years, they look for him. Invariably, they got him. And uh, you can see now that um, the people are happy. I, I listened to a woman who was saying, I'm proud of the police, I'm very proud of the police. That's the widow of one of uh, Daddy Chuku's victims. Oh. I can feel the joy of a, a lot of the I mean, family members of those victims because this will serve as some measure of um, justice for them, that this guy has been taken out. And kudos to the police. I've always said it, that where the police want to work, especially when you touch one of their own. They do a diligent job. The Nigerian police is reputed to be of international standard, and that's why they may not have all the tools. We may not respect them, but when they go abroad, they never fail to do us proud. This is another evidence that the Nigerian police can deliver the goods if you encourage them sufficiently. All right. Uh, Chuku, the Nigeria police, you know, making giant strides in River State. But then, you know, did they mention something about the fact that they have international repute, especially if and when you touch their own? But it doesn't have to get to that before the acts, you know, in every situation. Yeah, that, that we'll talk about, you know, overhauling the police. I believe it should just go, it should go beyond just reforms. Because these are individuals who are trained. The police are trained. You go to training, but the idea that you can, you know, put them in just any kind of conditions in the barracks, the idea that you can move them about just anyhow in open, you know, vans, you know, and attach them to public individuals, you know, to play roles that are not, you can't find in their service uh, manner. Do, I think those are some of the things that really make you know, the, the, the Nigerians do not, not have much confidence in the police. And so these things become a psychological, you know, weight on them. So, well, you can do the job anyhow, who cares? You know, I mean, and the emphasis on, you know, everything you must pay, everything you must demand a bribe and all of that. I, I hope this is something that one day would be just, will somehow, will be removed from the police. Because Nigerians really want to work with the police. They really want to love their police. Which country wouldn't want to love their police? I mean, it's a national, like I would say, it's a national institution. It's a national heritage. You go into any country, the police, you know, these men, these women are people you will surely see regularly on a daily basis, you know. So, and there's a tendency to, you know, gauge how the, the citizens of the country, how the people generally behave when you look at the policemen. So, I think... Yes, it's true. When they go abroad, they win laurels and all that because they are well trained. 
But the environment you know, hinders them from really putting in their best. And so what do they do? They just fall back to, you know, that, you know, odious Nigerian factor. They just fall back, you know, well, we just do it anyhow, Sha. You know, at least end of the month I get my salary. And how much is the salary? So I think the authorities really need to just go beyond police reform, overhaul the entire system. Let people, let professionalize the police. You cannot treat the accountant of your company anyhow now. You can't treat you know, any people in a proper organization. You can't treat anybody anyhow. So make the police a professional organization such that people will be proud to join the police, and then you remove misfits. Then you will see that, let me tell you, people, the, the, the tendency, the inclination for people to commit crime will be removed. Look at what Tatunji is doing. Look at his antecedents. And I'm not surprised. Look at the other day, they said the reporter was kidnapped. Within a few hours, he was you know, uh, free. So what are we talking about? You know, mm -hmm. you see, a, 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 a fruit does not fall far from the tree. You know, this is a CP that has been, you know, that has shown dedication to duty. And now, as a CP, he is putting in so much effort. You know, it's not easy policing River State. It's not easy policing mm -hmm. that state. Mm -hmm. But so far, so good. I wish him all the best. And I wish he can, you know, really leave a good mark before he's transferred or promoted to higher uh, duties. And I think it's important also for citizens to also trust, yeah, they, trust yeah, the we, police, cooperate. The you can and... trust, but, <laughs> but love the police. Mm. They are good, they are bad. You just continue to speak out, continue to hope, continue to pray that they get better. All right, now, uh, Nigeria is not at war with any country, but it appears it is at 